My name is Mark Allen. I'm the founder of Machine Project, which is an experimental research and development space working with artists on ideas of performance um, in Los Angeles. I started Machine Project in 2003 in a storefront in Echo Park, and it's a space that we still have. In the beginning, the idea was to have a place for all different kinds of culture in LA to kind of collide with each other. So we would do poetry readings, we do food events, uh, experimental ping pong shows, and we provide a space for projects to happen that are not understood to be successful already in a conventional sense. And we're really invested in doing that with a live audience. So the Getty Museum was doing a citywide show about modern architecture in Los Angeles. And we were invited to be part of that to do a live programming component to it. Most of the time, architecture is something you drive by, or you're hiking in Griffith Park and you see it in the distance, or it's an inhabitant in a TV show that you might be watching. So what Machine Project aimed to do with this show was to investigate all the different ways you might experience architecture in LA and collaborate with artists to develop works. So when we were curating this series, we were thinking a lot about how is modern architecture understood in like an art historical context and wanting to provide another voice for it. And maybe there's modern architecture with a big M, and we were kind of interested in modern architecture with a small M. With all the projects that we did for the Modern Architecture series, it was about transforming the perspective of the space for the public. And so we partner with artists. They do research, and they investigate, and they think about what they might want to say about a space. And then we figure out how to present that as a project to the public. It's like this partnership between the site, the artist, and the public, with this event being the moment that brings these three things together. A big component of the show was making videos for all the projects. And I've been working with an artist, Emily Lacey, at Machine Project for a long time in a lot of different capacities. And in the last three years, she and I together have been working very closely on producing all these videos. The use of filming allows you to see these different perspectives. So this idea of uh, the camera being a way that the viewer can move through a whole space feels to me like it connects very strongly with the idea of exploring architecture. One of the pieces for the series was called Welcome by the Sunland Dancers. And it was developed by Jimmy James and Tara Jane O'Neill. Tara and Jimmy developed this piece to take place in the hills behind Lincoln Heights with downtown Los Angeles in the background. Jimmy runs a space called Peter in Los Angeles that a lot of uh, interesting new dance pieces are coming out of. And when I first began thinking about this series, the first idea I had is there has to be a piece where LA is the backdrop. So you're not inside of a building, you're not investigating a modernist house, but it's this idea of LA as a location or LA as an environment.
Uh, my name is Kamau Amu Patton. I'm an intermediate artist. I do uh, drawing, painting, sculpture, uh, and uh, kind of extended media. A big aspect of my work is to engage with um, the host environment. In terms of this project, um, engaging with the skyline of uh, Los Angeles. Part of my um, practice involves um, performing sound works, building sculptures that I play um, to create these sounds. So uh, my initial kind of idea was to find a space that would complement the sculptures that I make and something that would provide a, a, a nice kind of interior for, um, for sound. During a break from searching, um, I went to the Buenaventure Hotel, the rooftop um, bar um, rotates. Just noticing um, <laughs> the kind of landscape of buildings <laughs> around and, uh, and seeing those buildings from like the ground up, you know, and being that high up, I was like, oh wow, <laughs> like this is that LA that I've been looking for, you know? And this is also the LA that, you know, thinking back, I've kind of had a, a relationship to through movies. Um, you know, this is like these icons of like LA architecture, LA, um, you know, the downtown. I was just wrapping around in my head, like, well, how do I, how do I engage this? Like, how do I engage these architectures um, in a way that really shows them for what they are? And I said, like, oh, well, from the sky. The flight plan is to go towards downtown LA and take a look at buildings that held the title of being the tallest building in Los Angeles. We'll be able to communicate through, through the, the headphones, and then you'll hear me through this omnidirectional as well. Yeah. And it'll hear like... A lot of pools down there. Yeah.
My name is Jacqueline Gordon. I work with sound and sculpture and installation. I grew up in Long Beach. I drove and commuted all over the place growing up. You kind of get used to parking in random uh, shopping malls, strip malls, and walking into an empty storefront and having a totally different experience. And so I kind of wanted to do something regarding that and with office buildings and with um, kind of that anything can be rented and anything can be used in these buildings. They're not um, a specific architecture and that uh, people here are extremely creative in what they're able to do in all these different types of spaces. My goal was to find a space that had different levels of um, small spaces and large spaces and different kinds of material and also different kinds of geometry. Because what I was really trying to explore is acoustics. The location that I ended up doing this project is in the Produce District in downtown LA. The Food Center building um, was kind of perfect because it had uh, these different rooms that I could use, including a stairwell that was extremely reverberant. And then there's a, there's a hallway that wraps around the whole building you could get lost actually kind of easily because everything looks the same. All the buildings have the same, all the, all the doorways have the same trim, have the same doors, have the same labels. Exploring the, the sonic qualities of the space and, um, and getting lost in it was, uh, was really what I was trying to, to evoke. Three, 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 two, three, three.
I'm Asher Hartman. I am an artist and experimental theater director, and I have a company called God Awful National Theater. So I put this theatrical production, Glass Bang, in the Schindler House for very specific reasons. Firstly, it's a masterpiece. It's one of the most beautiful modernist environments that I can imagine. It's also a place that's extremely desirable. For me personally as an artist, extremely desirable as an artwork, and also sort of speaks to the impenetrability of that, that you actually can't own the Schindler House you can't live there. And I'm interested in the relationship of the artist to the art piece, affordability, accessibility. I mean, the piece really deals with money, class, the ability to own a home, own a body, to own anything. The story is about a man who uh, left his very beautiful home with two uh, people, a couple, uh, men, two men, to take care of. He comes home and he finds that uh, all the furniture is gone and that he's also invited his ex-wife to uh, party with them to, for a welcoming and all these other people who he doesn't know. We wanted the audience to be literally in the play and I like that. I like that because you're living inside of this party. Part of it is this utopic dream that architecture will fit people, serve people, better lives, make life interesting, make life beautiful, and on the other hand, uh, closes down that conversation for some. Do we as artists, and I guess I think about this all the time as an artist, you know, I make art that is for a particular class, typically, other artists come and see it, intellectuals come and see it, maybe people with uh, uh, money or people on the higher end of the economic scale see this work. So who is it for? What is it, how does it really go out into the world? How does it really better uh, the social landscape? It's a question I think for me as an artist that I grapple with all the time. What does this do? Um, we have these high ideals, are we able to attain them? Peace makes fun 
of all the desires I left alone in the sky. A home is not inviolable. Listen in the trees, in the glass. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get the feeling like people are watching me and watch me move around, make decisions, mm -hmm. maybe the neighbors. What do you want a woman for? Friendship. Friendship? Awesome. <laughs> you know, companionship. How about Apollonia? What do you want a woman for? Safety. Safety. Companionship, friendship, safety. Marion, what do you want a woman for? For love. For love? <laughs> no. Yeah, yes! You know, some men are like dogs. You know, without stomachs. They just eat and 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 shit it all out for somebody else to clean up. But we just keep feeding them. Has he died? No. I think you too. Why does my hand hurt? I mean, it twitches and it, it aches. I can't. Oh, oh my God, he's the guy who owns the house. He's the guy who owns the house. Byron's? Okay. Who's Byron? Byron. What are you talking about? That place is fine. Completely. Yes. You know. He's totally fine. Listen. All right. Listen, if you say so, if you say so. If you just get into trouble, if you're having problems, I don't know what the deal is with uh -huh. you, but if you're if you're breaking the scene and everything like this with all this mission guys, just call me. Just wave your hand and call me and I'll be over, okay? All right. Okay. Okay. Just let's go. Let's go. Come on. It's very slow. It's very slow. Sorry. Sorry. Just, uh, you can say. And now, the play begins. Hello. In my world, there are no women. I fly here, and I fly there, and I see none. Uh, who is, who's this? Oh. oh, that's Brian from the Crab Pot. <laughs> uh, do you know that's a come on in Israel? Well, I was there recently, and I fell into the most wonderful encounter with an Arab man. His penis was long and slim. I took it in my mouth and thought, may this day never end. <laughs> That was my real wish. Now, because there were no women there, there was no one to stop us, no one to call us in. So we stayed out all night under the stars. Do you know how many stars there are? Everyone, tell us which condiment you most detest. Ketchup. Ketchup, Ketchup I love ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> What is that smell? Spit in the odor of constant motion. Children, 
Amou! Beware of men who love each other. They'll upset the world. May I serve? And may I also return to you? Words do not work, matter ends place so awfully. God's image, perfect existence, heart's emanation. Softer than air and yet more graceful. Thou who conforms to my desires. Get it on iTunes for 99 cents. Oh, Evan. Evan. Of all the people seated here, there's only one who truly loves me. Soft, soft is the light of the moon. Wild green is the heart too soon. For God, you love me, not my June. We were only half awake. It was only now. All the love we were to make. But you've forgotten how. Now you smile and turn away. 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 I know what you mean. I was outside. In those Santa Ana winds. <laughs> Crazy. Just whipping up between my thighs and blowing up my dress. <laughs> Can't stand it. Hey, hey. hey Miss Boulevard. Better late than never. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, this lady. I don't Hello. exist. When I'm in love, it's only. I am a cloud, an early mist, a stream, the air, the morning dew, nonsense. I I love the shuddering sense I get when I consider how nature conspires to hold me inside, pressed up against the threat to which they out there are perpetually exposed. Enough of this talk. Byron, I love you, but you're going on diatribes, and then you're going on diatribes. I can't understand what's coming out of your mouths. God, you're in the foulest mood tonight. Mm. Hey, Brian, mm. it's a party. Could you put some music on, please? Absolutely. That's a good idea. What would you like to hear? Oh, I don't know. Something, something light, something poppy, mm. something people can dance to. Yeah. I can't eat Andy Pasta twice just because she is so nice, Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> Angelina. The waitress at the local beach.
I want to go back to another time. Okay. When? Two days ago, we were in the bedroom. Everyone, grab your spirits. Come on, we're going upstairs. Days ago, you and me, almost alone, no company. Days ago, no chums, no bums, no glum roomies. Spirits, my love, come. Remember when you were an ordinary man. Remember when you would take my hand and clutch it to your heart. Remember when we planned vacations, looked for sales, made reservations, when we fought over little things like sex and money. Things you said that were not funny. When we were lost. <sighs> Two nights ago was almost midnight. Brian walked in eating an apple. <laughs> hey, Brian. What's up? <laughs> um, could, could you go and turn off the living room light, please? No problem. <laughs> he never turns out a light. I mean, that's the third time. When I was young, I, I had an alter ego. A type of bird. A bird of flight. I was really nice to him. You know what? You think I was rude? Okay. This, this bird of flight was Briar. Oh, priestly power he had. And in the umber night, I would steadily walk up the red rocks to this, this brightly lit paper house, white like a lantern. There I'd call Briar, my bird, my mate. And he'd come and put his beak really close to mine, and I could see his two golden eyes. And they would shift so that we could look into each other. That was our meeting place. And then he would slip into me, and I could feel my tiny heart beating hard against my breast, like a seed capable of lifting me off where I went, human feces would copulate with dismembered earth. Byron, you know, there's something really wrong with you. <laughs> yeah? Is there something wrong with us? No. Do you think you can ask Brian to go? Brian? Why? Hey, guys. Speak of the devil. What is it when you have to drink and drink and drink all day? Laziness. <laughs> Alcoholism. That's it. <laughs> if it weren't for these two crazy guys, I would be working in an office somewhere, going out of my mind. Mm -hmm. These two guys <laughs> saved my life. Hey, Take a yeah. picture Excuse of me. me. Come on, Excuse dude, you. oh, you're such on. a party pooper. Oh, now see what you do. Okay, we need a third. Come on, there's room. <laughs> oh, oh, warm, might as well jump on in. It's already warm. <laughs> third. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
Now is the winter. <laughs> now poop, I hate that stuff. Anyway. See, uh, wait, I got another one. There's an Ubermensch and an Undermensch. Not to mention underwear on the winch. <laughs> Under a bench. Which is what I certainly like to We stopped like All of a sudden, I found myself outside by the pool. My ribs were bruised, and yet I felt the most blistering sense of ecstasy. Since I've been back, my sense of smell is acute. My body is slack. My house is not my own. Will you let us live here? I cannot move in small spaces. I need air. Oh, air. Will you kiss me? Maybe. I see a hole in the ground. And a hole in the ground is your throat. I see the ridges of your esophagus. Your esophagus? leads me back to my cock. Uh, listen, everyone. The time has come for me to tell you goodbye. It's time for you to leave my house. Unless, of course, you serve a purpose. We you were invited here tonight I under false pretenses. No, 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 no. The party is over. No, it's not over. No, please, no, 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 please. No, no, is this your bag? Is that your Hang bag? Your bag. He's take, take your it. bag. Please take no, your bag no, and go. No, 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 it's time no. to go. Kevin, please, Kevin, it's would you time stop? to go. Come if you have anything, if you brought anything with you, please get your stuff Pay and no go. Attention. Put your drinks Don't down. Move. No, put your it's, drinks it's, down. No. The party is over. It is not over. Gavin, what is your problem? I can't believe you're doing it. Don't stay. You need to get out. Everyone, out of the fucking Get out. This is not a Get out. Get out. Get out of my house. Get out. Get out. Out, out, out. You, especially you, take your purse and all your friends and go. Oh, what do you got to say? Oh, tell me what you got to say. Nothing coming out of your lips now. Surprise. Your body's not your own. We've known that they're clever. Your body's not your own. Skin stretches. Chase CD, $44,315.19. Poetry, your music, very design. Uh, Netflix 50 shares, $21,641. I bought them in 09.
I'm ready to reclaim what's mine. I'm ready to open my soul in front of the whole group and tell them all I've suffered for so long for playing a thing. Come on, what do you say? You and me? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm stiff. I'm sick of living. Here, you heard it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tapped out. Deers, doves, chariots of light could not get me out of my funk. I have no free will. I hate everybody, regardless of where they come from. I don't care. I just do what the little pebbles in my mind tell me. Let's face it, you and I both know it. There's nothing for it. Nothing to be done. It's ancient. It's an old curse. Living. My name is Max Markowitz. And I'm John Wood. We started this music group about seven or eight years ago called Ing. It started out as just the two of us improvising music with each other and making records. This performance was at the Maranatha High School pool, which is on the Maranatha High School campus that includes the Ambassador Auditorium in Pasadena. What was interesting about all of the examples that we were shown is they were more subtle obscure things to focus on in Los Angeles instead of the really big, like, obvious ideas. And uh, Bennett was really interested in finding, like, hidden gems in Los Angeles, like this pool. I think the, uh, the opportunity to use all the different spaces within the pool area was really intriguing to us. We found out that there are speakers in the pool that we can project music, that the music that we're playing in the outside room also in the pool. And then there is a bottom room a viewing room that we thought that we could make different music down there that would bleed into the pool also. So then you would have kind of three different performances. You would have the main room performance and then it sounds much different once you're under the water and then you would have the viewing room performance. And then we rotate going back and forth performing in all three areas. It's like we're on a loop too. So then I would start, if I was downstairs playing, once I noticed that he was coming down the stairs, I would stop and slowly start leaving, and then we would pass each other and keep doing that in and out of the pool thing over and over. The main approach to the space was to really use it as an instrument and let it play itself. I think that the audience was as much a part of the piece as we were in certain ways because just their physical presence in the room changed the frequencies that would naturally naturally reverberate in there and Absolutely. and they changed the sound that was in the pool and those sounds we were recapturing with microphones and putting back into different spaces so the audience they were really playing the instrument of the space just as much as we were
My name is Jessica Cowley. I work at Machine Project, but also host sing-alongs in public and in private. My name is Bennett Williamson. Uh, I'm an artist. I work in a lot of different fields, a lot of media-related work and that kind of thing. Um, and I also worked at Machine Project uh, as a project producer, sort of a project manager. So I did a lot of research for this project since I was finding all the different sites that the artists were going to work with uh, for the whole field guide to LA architecture. I think the happy foot, sad foot sign was more of like already a populist landmark that I knew about just from being in the neighborhood. So I was interested in it in a personal way, even though it didn't have some of like the history and weight and the serious like modern architecture cred of these other locations we we're looking at. The happy foot, sad foot sign, it's on Sunset Boulevard, sort of right on the border of Silver Lake and Echo Park. And it's in front of the Los Angeles Foot Clinic. It has this big rotating part on the top, uh, one side of it, has a cartoon of a sad foot in crutches, uh, and the other side's like a happy foot jumping up in the air. The local mythology or lore is that if you drive by the sign and you see the happy side, then you'll have a good day. If you see the sad side, you'll have a bad day, or you can ask it questions. Um, and I actually have a, a terrible OCD relationship to the sign where I need to so look at the sign. If I see the sad side, I need to wait until it spins around to the happy side. Then I have to like give it sort of like a, a nod. When I was talking with um, Mark about the project, he mentioned that Bennett was looking to do uh, a physical celebration of the sign in addition to his online piece. Um, and I had actually for Machine Project done a sing-along in public space the summer before. So um, we thought that that might be a good matchup. It was obvious that we wanted to do something about happiness and sadness. Our initial thoughts were, well, we could do happy songs and sad songs, but you realize how difficult it is to pick a song that's just about being happy or just about being sad. So many songs are about like love gone wrong or like love forever. Um, and we went back and forth just like brainstorming. We also wanted to think about which songs were easy to sing or people might know or were fun or memorable. And uh, eventually we whittled it down to like three sad songs and three happy songs. And we just would alternate between sad and happy, sad and happy. You know, literally everyone was looking up at the sign, singing to it. Um, and one of my favorite parts of the sing-along wasn't actually a specific song, but at the beginning we did a warm-up and we all stood in a circle around the sign. Half of us got the happy foot, half of us got the sad foot, and we modulated our voices. Hey! Aww. <laughs> and uh, and that was like a, a beautiful, very physical way to to vocalize the sign. Thanks for coming, everybody. We're here celebrating the Happy Foot, Sad Foot sign. Uh, it, you may have heard that it has the power to predict the fate of your day. When you drive by in the morning, they say that the first side that you see, whether happy or sad, will predict if you have a good or bad day. Um, but we wanted to celebrate the sign through a selection of songs that talk about the duality of happy and sadness uh, in our lives. So everyone, look up at the sign, and when you see the happy side, go, yay! 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 And then when the sad side comes around, go, oh.
One, two, three, four.